Recently, Facebook AI open sourced Blender, an AI chatbot that feels more human. I wanted to download this and try it for myself, uh, and I'll walk you through exactly what I did in this video. Blender is written in Python using Facebook's PyTorch package, so I thought it might be cool to put it into Excel with Pixel, and uh, I'll show you that too. Blender is an open source project and it's hosted on GitHub. We can go to the GitHub page, see exactly what code's in there here. We can then clone it as we usually would with a, a project on GitHub. Uh, the README's got some information about you know, how the project works and how to install it and that kind of stuff. What I've done here is I've actually already gone ahead and cloned the repo. And then to install the requirements, we need to run pip install minus r requirements as we, we usually would for a project like this. Uh, we also have to install PyTorch because uh, that's not actually listed in the requirements file. Uh, once we've installed all of that, on the help page here it's got some, some scripts that we can run to, uh, to run the model and what those do is they download a bunch of, bunch of files and then, and then run the, uh, the chatbot. So if I run one of these scripts now, this has already downloaded the files the first time you run it, it takes a little bit longer, uh, but essentially it does a bunch of setup and then it'll start, here we go, loading some models and here we go, so I'm a dancer, I love to sing, my message is hi, I love to sing and let's see what the chatbot comes back with. There we go, that's awesome. What kind of music do you sing? I sing uh, opera. Takes a few seconds. There we go. So we can see we're actually having a, a conversation with this uh, just from downloading this code from GitHub and running it using our standard Python. So this is like already, it's, it's pretty cool and was, was pretty easy to set up. Uh, so next I wanted to see how easy it would be to integrate this chatbot into, into a different application. So I opened up the, the Parl AI project in PyCharm uh, and found the safe interactive script, which is the script we were just running just to see you know, what that's doing. Uh, we can see here it's got some code to set up some command line arguments. Uh, and then the main function is this safe interactive function, uh, which is doing the argument parsing and then it's creating an agent, uh, creating this human agent, and then creating this world object. So it looks like the, the world object is some combination of the options, the human agent and the AI agent. Uh, and then the world is being run in this, in this while loop. So it calls world.parly. Uh, and then that's like a step of the model. If we look at the the actual agent code, so this safe local human agent, you'll see this is uh, this agent class. And the agent has a couple of different methods. One is observe uh, and the other is act. So when, uh, when a bit of dialogue is said, like when, when someone says something, then this observe method is called. And then when the agent should, should do something, then this act methods called. So we can see in this safe interactive script, it's really not doing that much, like everything else is, is in the rest of the Parly framework. If for my application, I want to break this into the two parts of creating the world and then doing this update step. So feeding in another, another line of dialogue periodically. So I created a new couple of files. Uh, and this will all be on GitHub as well, so you'll be able to, to download this and take a look later. Uh, but essentially what I did was create two functions, this Parl AI create world, uh, and this is really just the code copied from that uh, interactive example that we saw earlier, where it's creating an agent uh, and creating the world and returning the world. And then the second function was this Parl AI speak function, where it takes a world and an input and then it calls this world.parly method after setting an input on the uh, on the human agents. We'll see that in a second. There's also a bit I did here to actually get the uh, get the whole conversation back and 
uh, truncate it to be like a maximum number of messages and just and return it just as a, a simple array. One thing I did where we had the, the safe human agent before, I've created this human Excel agent. We'll see that in, in Excel in a second. Uh, but I just want to show you this now. What it does is those two methods where we saw there was an observe method and an act method. So my observe method simply adds the message to the conversation and the act method gets some input which I've already set and passes that as a reply. So the input is set using the set input method and then that's what's passed in this in this act method which is called as part of that parley method. So back in here you can see where I've created the world. I've actually created this human agent based on this human Excel agent. Uh, and then here in the parley speak what I'm doing is getting the agents from the world and then setting the input on that human agent before I call world.parly, which is the thing that uh, you know runs the runs a conversational step to get the, the AI's response. To test this is all working, I just uh, here I've got it calling this create world function and then just calling speak with just an initial hello and then printing the conversation that this method has returned. And so if I run this, then hopefully it will all work. You can see the output coming out here. So it's doing the same as it did when we ran it before. It's loading the model, doing a bunch of setup, and here we go. So it's saying, yep, the conversation is me saying hello, and then here we are, the AI is, is asking how I am. So that's all looking pretty good. So the next thing I wanted to do uh, was to actually use these two functions in Excel to you know, be able to interact with this chatbot directly in, in Excel. So you may have noticed before that these functions, I added this Excel funk decorator. What that is, is uh, it's from Pixel. So we here we've imported Excel funk from Pixel and this just tells the Pixel Excel add-in to expose this function. Here what we're saying is it's a function that takes a string, so that's our, our optional model string, and it returns a Python object, which in this case is the Parlay I world object. And then the other function, uh, speak, takes an object, which is our world object, a string, which is our input, uh, an optional integer limit, and it returns uh, a 2D array of, of strings. To get that into, into Excel, all we have to do is configure the pixel add-in. So say the Python path is, is here, this current folder, and the modules are these PAL AI Excel modules. So if we go into Excel now, I've already got the, the pixel add-in loaded we'll see that from adding those Python functions, we can now call them from Excel. So here we go, I've got parlay create world. That's the Python function we're just looking at. If I run that, this is now doing that setup, loading those files, and there we go, it's returned this world object. And then I've also got my parlay speak thing. So I'll just write some text to tell it first of all. And then if I say parlay speak, it's there, it takes this world object, and then some text, so that will do like one step of the conversation. It just takes a second and there we go. So now uh, the AI has responded and I've said hello. It says hello, how are you? I'm listening to you too. You too. Mm. I like music but not so keen on you too! Exclamation mark. And now when I enter that, that will cause Excel to recalc, which does the next step of the AI calling this Parle AI speak thing again. So now it's saying, what do I do for a living? Do you have hobbies? I also like liking. And again, doing another step of the AI. And there we go. So this is like kind of weird because I've got this AI chatbot. Uh, but all running in Excel, kind of in real time. And I'm just running this on, I'm running it on a, a Microsoft Surface. So it's not even like particularly fast computer, but it's but it's working pretty nicely. So it's, it's really cool. Uh, I tidied this thing up a little bit just into a, another spreadsheet. Just so you can see here, this is the same thing. I've got another conversation going on, but it's exactly the same thing. I've got this uh, create world function here. And then here I've got this parlay I speak function uh, which is just taking the input from here. So, McDonald's, what do you do? Uh, I make videos. What's it going to say? That's cool. I'm a football player. So, <laughs> you can see it's, it's, it's kind of weird like having this thing in Excel, but Excel is actually a really nice interactive environment for this kind of thing. 
Uh, I don't know really how useful it is having having a chatbot in Excel like this, but it's it's quite a fun toy, and it also illustrates that if you have more complex Python code, then exposing it to to Excel is is really really straightforward. Like it was literally ten minutes work to make this happen. So if you have business users that are more comfortable using Excel, or you yourself are just using Excel to play around with data, then actually getting your Python code into Excel is super simple. And it means that you can really interact with it in a way that you, you can't just on the command line. Uh, and in particular for, you know, for business users that aren't going to be using command line tools or PyCharm or even Jupyter Notebooks, then you know, Excel's the way they work. So to deliver stuff in Excel is, is actually really straightforward. So I hope you've hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Uh, I've enjoyed playing around with uh, with Blender and Parl AI. Uh, visit our website pixelpyxll.com uh, to see how you can write Excel add-ins in Python.